Welcome to another Healthy Indoors Minute. This is our vacuum system for the house that we're building. I will introduce you to this in a second, but first I'd like to talk about cleaning for a second. You can build a house as high performance as you want, and it could be perfect when you hand it to people or a bunch of people, and maybe also animals who are gonna live in that house. At that point, whatever performance you've designed into it may cease to matter because what people do in homes Cooking, cleaning, and living there, just being in a space, are all going to mess with the indoor chemistry and also the physics. My kids are going to open and close doors. That's not built into my heat load calculation, for example. Um, so cleaning is a thing you will want to do. We all know that it is a recipe for disaster, especially in houses that have pets, if you are not cleaning up on a regular basis. But this is a question that we asked our home chem scientists, uh, and they did not say generally that cleaning is always a good thing. On the large scale, we're talking about the fact that we're using chemicals to clean. So you're gonna spray a surface with something that is made in a factory, and maybe you don't know what's in that bottle. Maybe it's got chlorine in it, which is generally not a good idea. Don't use chlorine unless you absolutely have to. But you're gonna be spraying things, then you're gonna be wiping. You're gonna be like exercising while you're wiping. And when you do that, now you're sloughing off a lot more of these skin flakes and making a lot more uh, chemistry around yourself. So that's one thing. The other thing is that the dust that is sitting on your nice flat ground that's not in your breathing space is fine where it is. Once it gets kicked up into the air, when you walk fast or you've got babies crawling over it, now you have localized areas of maybe not great air quality, and that has a lot to do with particles. The particles are the dust bits, and particles are generally always bad to breathe. So vacuuming becomes a thing that you would like to do. But if you don't have a HEPA filter in your vacuum, then what you have done when you run a vacuum over that nice dust that's sitting on a surface safe out of your breathing zone is bring it up off of that surface and kick it up into the air because a non-HEPA filter vacuum just lets a whole bunch of stuff through it. So now you've actually made your house more dangerous by vacuuming it. Now we are selecting materials for this build that are all chemically non-reactive. Uh, and that's a good thing, but there are chemicals that are non-reactive that are also bad. For example, phthalates. You might have heard of phthalates, and they're spelled funny. I'm spelling it for you right now. These live in plasticky kind of stuff. It's in there to make the plastic more workable. If you're selecting a flooring that's gonna be very waterproof, which, by the way, all schools in the United States have vinyl floors in them, it makes them very easy to clean up. When you have dust sitting on those floors, the dust is actually going to absorb the phthalates that are coming out of that vinyl flooring. And these things can come out for decades and decades. So it's not like it just off gases in the first 30 days or whatever. It'll come off forever. It gloms onto the dust that is sitting on the floor. And then when you kick it up or you vacuum it up with a vacuum that's not actually going to grab those dust particles, it's just gonna eject it into the air then we have a major problem because those things get into your body, your body does not recognize them, and they stay in there forever, and you've got this cumulative buildup. That's why HEPA filter. So this is our central vacuum system. Of course, you could just carry around a vacuum that has a HEPA filter. That's what we do in the tiny lab. But this was kind of a cool upgrade. The side effect of this, because everything has side effects for uh, home performance, is that we're gonna be sucking dirty air into this, filtering it, and then blowing clean air out of it. Where will we install this canister is your next question. A lot of people will install this in their garage. At that point, it becomes a suction every time you use it on your house because it's taking air from your house and sending it outside. Of course, what needs to happen at that point, especially in a very tight house, is that air will get sucked in aggressively through any gaps and cracks in the house. So we want to install this inside the house because of that concern. So this will live in our crawl space. And remember, our crawl space is completely inside the house. And we proved that by doing a zonal pressure test while we ran the blower door. So it's inside the boundary of the house's enclosure. And so it will have both a cleaning effect, removing the particles from the house, and of course, change your filters. But also, it will not have the pressure imbalance effects 
that it would have if we were to install this in the wrong place. So all of this is the home as a system. You need to think about everything and where everything goes and what it's doing side effect wise because of course everything has side effects. I hope that you uh, explore this in your own cleaning regimen. Make sure to look at your own vacuum and make sure that it does have a HEPA filter built into it and if not, go buy a new one. It's an easy expense. Uh, please do subscribe to Healthy Indoors Magazine. Comment, like, subscribe. Tune in next time. <music>